So we're back for our second visit with Kim. As you recall, we took a digital impression for the maxillary left canine. Nice thing about digital is our ability to actually blow up the margin, see it visually, then this gets modemed to the laboratory, and then they basically make a virtual model and fabricate the restoration on the virtual model. So at this point, we don't have a model to work with, and fortunately here at Keating, we know we have the accuracy that we really don't need a model. But let's check it here to uh, certainly reinforce that. So, my beautiful assistant, Jessica. Let's go ahead. I went ahead and anesthetized him a little bit. We'll wiggle off the temporary. Good. Okay, let's rinse. Turn to your right just a little bit. Perfect. We did a great job taking care of the temporary and the tissue looks great. All right. So here is our KDZ Bruxer Ultra. It's a zirconium dioxide coping or core, just like a PFM would be. And then it's overlaid with Norataki porcelain. Yeah, it looks great, it looks great. We use this material for a number of reasons. One, it's the most aesthetic of any of the zirconia materials because it's overlaid with a beautiful ceramic. And Kim has a full mouth rehabilitation that was done previously that was all done with zirconia overlaid with a powder liquid ceramic. So we wanted to match that. So let's go ahead and try it in. First thing I'm gonna do is check margins and contacts. Good. Let me just have you hold that down. Good. Okay. Good. Okay, check margins here. Check that mesial contact one more time. Margins look good. Turn toward me. I think I'm going to reduce just a little bit, just a little tighter than I would like. Certainly acceptable, but just a little tighter than I would like. So I'm just going to take a fine finishing diamond. This is a 25 mark on finishing diamond. And just, just brush that area. and then we'll polish it back up. Let's try that again. All right, because this is zirconian, it has actually a translucent core, relatively translucent core, I want to try it in with glycerin to make sure we like color because we can modify shade very slightly, not a lot, but very slightly with different shades of resin cement. So I like to try it in with glycerin first. That's actually Deox, D-E-O-X from Ultradent Products. Try it in with clear first so then I can use a clear cement which won't influence at all the shade. Pretty straightforward shade due to us matching his existing. Turn toward me. What do you think, Jessica? Wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and bond this into place. Since this is zirconia, we're going to use a cleaner, and we're going to use IvaClean, which is a sodium hydroxide from IvaClar, to clean the inside. Let that sit for about 20 seconds. That removes any of the saliva or any of the protein or organic layers that may become contaminants on this. And then we're gonna put a zirconia primer and we're gonna use Z Prime Plus on this from Bisco. So it's a bright pink liquid. Again, it's called IvaClean. You do not want to clean the internal of any of the zirconia dioxides, whether it be monolithic or layered with phosphoric acid. It'll inhibit the ability to get actually a bond to it. And we can get a little bit of a bond to zirconia, and so we might as well try to bond this as most durably as possible. 
So we'll let that sit for 20 seconds. Okay, so this is sat for 20 seconds. We're going to rinse thoroughly and air dry. Get a very nice, clean, non-contaminated zirconia surface. And then I'm going to use a zirconia dioxide primer, and this is Z Prime Plus from Bisco. This would be similar to the silane that you would use for your all ceramic restorations, but this actually gives you a chemical bond to the zirconia. So we're just going to let that sit for at least a minute. We'll set that aside. And now we'll go ahead and go to the tooth. Turn toward me just a little bit. We're going to utilize a total etch technique as we bond this into place. We're going to use a 35% phosphoric acid followed by a dentin bonding agent. Dentin bonding agent will be all bond three from Bisco. So we'll go ahead and etch the enamel first, followed by the dentin. There's an enamel collar around this. Let it sit for at least 15 seconds. Okay. That might have a bitter taste here. You okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to desiccate at this point. Actually, before I put my primer, I'm going to put a desensitizing agent. And this is a glutaraldehyde water hema solution. There's several on the market. The one I prefer is called Microprime G from Danville Engineering. Microprime G. And it actually increases bond strength. Great studies on that. And it also decreases any sensitivity. So anytime I do a total etch, whether it be a crown like we're doing on Kim today, or whether it be a, a direct composite even, after I etch, don't desiccate, just remove the excess moisture, put a layer of the Microprime G on, let it sit for about 10 to 15 seconds. I don't like to air dry this because, again, I don't want to desiccate. We'll just take the high-speed suction and just suction the excess moisture. Our goal with total etch is to bond to a non-desiccated tooth. Not wet, not dry. Now we're going to go ahead and mix our primer. This is all bond three. It's an AB primer. So it's a dual cure as well as a light cure. This is a fourth generation dental primer. Okay. So multiple layers of primer. This has a self-limiting film thickness of less than 10 microns, so I'm not worried about this keeping my crown from seating. You'll smell a little bit of an acetone-like smell, Kim. Okay. We're going to go ahead and use moisture-free air. This is an alcohol-based system, so we need to dissipate the alcohol and allow it to evaporate. This is an ADEC, made by ADEC, warm air tooth dryer, which gives us dehumidified and oil-free air. Good. Let's go ahead and cure that. This is a Velo, V-A-L-O, cordless light from Alternate. It's definitely one of my favorite lights. And it's available in multiple colors. We could have got pink for, for your side. Next time we will. All right. Let's go ahead and have the dual link. So the dual link, this is from Bisco. It's my favorite dual cure resin cement. Because there's some opacity, a little bit of opacity because of the thickness of the crown and the zirconia, I prefer to use a dual cure versus a light cure. So we're going to go ahead and let's first make sure that that zirconia primer, the Z Prime Plus, is completely dry, which it is. We're going to go ahead and load our crown with a dual link. We don't need much. And then we're going to seat it to place. Make sure it goes all the way down. We're not going to remove any of the excess two millimeter light guide.
we're going to take a two millimeter light guide. We're going to cure dead center. Go ahead and cure away from the margins for five seconds. Good. On the facial, because it's a full coverage crown, on the lingual. And this is a light by Ivaclar, another very, very nice light. It's called the Blue Face Style. So once we've tacked it into place, we're going to go ahead and wave the margins for about five seconds. And then we'll take either a scaler or a Bard Parker blade. I prefer the number 12 Bard Parker blades. And we just peel away this excess. It goes to a gel stage and easily just peels right off. Go ahead and section. On the lingual. And let me have a piece of floss. This cement is so easy to use because of the way it cleans up in the gel phase. We have a metal strip. If for some reason we get a little bit of resin that binds the contacts, I use this little saw blade. It's called the ser serrated saw from Brassler. And it just breaks through that, then I can floss through. Okay, let's try that again. Eliminate this. We'll go back and have a new piece of floss, please. So we'll use the serrated saw just to break through that resin in approximately. Then we'll take our floss. Make sure we remove as much excess as possible. Then we have the deox. Then we'll take glycerin. This is deox from Ultradent. Put it around our margins to eliminate an oxygen inhibition layer from forming. And then we'll cure. Again, even though it's dual cure, I like to use a light for at least a minute to get maximum polymerization in the shortest amount of time. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and rinse. Beautiful. Gonna floss through again. Contacts are great, margins are great. Have another piece of floss, please. Thank you. Just a little bit of excess cement there. Perfect. Let me have my explorer, please. Nice. Let's rinse. Okay. Bite down gently. How's that feel? Good. Good. Let's check the contact. Occlusal. Tap up and down. Slide to your left. Open, bite down, slide to your left, good. So the fact that we took basically a three-quarter arch, the lab was able to match the contours of the adjacent tooth. They were able to mount it and go through, stick your tongue out, you got a little piece, there you go, thanks Kim. 
Be able to get, go through the lateral intrusive movements. We want canine guidance. Bite down. How's that feel? Good. Good. I'll give you a little bit of water. I've got another little piece right there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a gift to you. Close and swish. How's that feel? Good. Great. So as you can see, using digital, we are able to eliminate the need for impressions. We can get it to the lab and back from the lab much quicker because there's not the, the time that we have to ship it. We don't have to have the models poured up. We don't have to have the dies being trimmed. That's all done digitally in a matter of a couple hours. And then we fabricated the crown. The mesial contact was just a little bit tight, but I'd rather have it a little bit tight than loose. And more than likely, with the time that he was in his temporary, maybe we got a little bit of migration, but not much. And we got great occlusal contact, canine guidance, the aesthetics are great. Perfect. So the next case, as you look at what you're doing in your office now with traditional impressions, where patient, and we talked to Kim last time about that, the benefit certainly from a patient's point of view that it's more comfortable. Next time you take a traditional impression and the patient says, I hate taking the impressions or I ha hate to have my impressions taken, think about digital. Or if you're using digital now, be sure to contact us at Keating Dental Arts so that we can help you through that process to make it as seamlessly and easy as possible.